Hi, good afternoon. I'm Gary Forstner of Stark & Stark, a shareholder and attorney in the Real Estate and Land Use Group. We do a lot of land use in general and, uh, and solar projects in particular. I'm here today with Chris Savastano, who is the Director of Commercial Development for NJR Clean Energy Ventures and affiliate of New Jersey Natural Gas. Chris has over 20 years experience in the energy industry and he's here to tell us about the dynamic and fast paced and fast growing field of solar energy. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Chris. Once again, I want to welcome back Chris Savastano of NJR Energy, Clean Energy Ventures. I'm Gary Forstner of Stark & Stark. Um, Chris, I wanted to ask you about the type of solar projects and how they work. Sure, Gary. Um, solar projects come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, there are two primary categories, first of which is um, net metered versus wholesale. And by net metered, I mean um, the project provides uh, power to the host facility. So it's uh, commonly referred to as behind the meter. And the ultimate host receives the benefit of that, uh, the power that's created. And, and by host, you mean like the property owner in essence? Correct, okay. the property owner, the customer. Um, on the wholesale side, uh, that is uh, what they call on the other side of the meter, not on the customer side of the meter. Um, and the power is, is generated and sold to the grid. Uh, the other uh, primary way uh, that we refer to these projects is um, either rooftop or ground mount. Uh, so then you have either net meter or wholesale or rooftop or ground mount and rooftop or ground mount uh, very self-explanatory um, the types of solar projects uh, in the industry we see are both residential and commercial um, and as an example uh, on the residential side uh, njr clean energy ventures offers what we call the sunlight advantage um, and generally the residential offerings are lease based although some residential customers can purchase um, the systems on their own uh, but what we tend to find is with regard to the upfront capital, it's much better to work through a leasing arrangement where a homeowner can, in uh, the instances of our product, um, pay us a, a fee, a lease fee over a 20 year period. No upfront capital. Uh, we're responsible for the operation and maintenance. Uh, makes it very easy for the customer to transact uh, with us for the uh, monthly lease payment, which roughly averages $59, uh, $60 a month. Uh, they get $100 a month in savings associated with the. Uh, their energy bill. Um, very, very popular structure. It's, it's, it's been a fantastic product for us um, on the residential side. Um, on the commercial side, uh, generally the way things work, again, and I'll focus on the types of structures we promote, um, the, uh, the commercial, the investor owner, which would be us, uh, we would either lease, uh, we would lease, I should say, either the uh, rooftop or we would lease the ground adjacent to the facility, and then we would enter into a power purchase agreement with uh, the owner, with the building owner, for sale of the electricity back uh, to the facility. Um, and again, this has been a very traditional structure um, in the industry and one we've found uh, to work out very well. Given the nature of the way these projects are, um, uh, the financials are recovered really um, in these, uh, these particular types of projects, the way the capital is recovered is through a mix of tax incentives, solar renewable energy credits um, that are traded um, in the state here. Uh, and the energy either savings or the energy revenue associated with the project. And for entities really um, to get involved in these types of transactions, especially larger buildings, larger facilities, generally getting involved in the sale of the renewable energy credits and other things um, tends to be a little complicated. And uh, we've found that it's best for uh, commercial customers to really work through market participants that understand uh, the complexities of the, uh, of the current environment, of the market, um, and if you know, we've had conversations about this, um, for those that are familiar with the other uh, rec markets in New Jersey, you know, you're selling the renewable energy credits for a period of 15 years um, from the time the project starts to generate them. And uh, to get involved in the rec markets and to sell those things generally requires a level of sophistication that we find um, market participants like ourselves fill, fill the gap and, and really provide some, some value-added services to the clients. So it, it basically with all the changes in the industry, I guess there's two things that I conclude from, from your comments. One is that um, with, with the changes, and I know we're going to talk about it in a subsequent podcast, but with the changes in the industry from a technology perspective, the business opportunities, these are really opportunities that are available essentially to almost every property owner subject to you know different types of, of, of programs if you would Absolutely. and you have programs for residential property mm -hmm. owners as well as, as small as well as large um, commercial property owners like mm -hmm. the project that we recently worked on that's right thank you very much Chris uh, please be certain to stay tuned to uh, the rest of our podcast series